Gold has climbed nearly 15% so far this year, but has been falling ever since minutes from the US Federal Reserve's April meeting pointed towards an imminent rate rise. Meanwhile, the black gold has been gaining to discuss both commodities and their change in fortunes. I'm joined by Phil Carr, head of trading from Gold and Silver Club. Hello, CA Phil. Yeah, hi there. Well, it's a different conversation we're going to have from last time, isn't it? Because let's start with gold shall we change of fortunes there but surely this was always going to happen yes last time when we discussed gold we were sitting around 1300 us dollars per ounce mm -hmm. so gold was on track for its best performance in 30 years in the first quarter gold up 16 percent year to date it was actually on the 2nd of May that we put in the high for gold this year. Since then, we've been correcting now for 25 days. Now, if you look at historical data on gold and where we're sat at the moment, a typical correction on gold lasts over 30 days. Mm -hmm. And if you have a look at the overall price structure of gold, an average bull market lasts at the minimum one to one and a half years. And we are now officially in bull market territory in gold where we expected a correction. Five months of rallies was not sustainable. So in terms of technical levels mm -hmm. that traders want to look at at the moment, we are now very near to a 50% correction since gold reached 1,300 US dollars per ounce. The 50% correction level sits at 1,175 US dollars and just below that is the 200 day moving average which a lot of investors look at which is at 1165. What you want to do, I and mean, we discussed it last time, so mm -hmm. you quite rightly mentioned that it's not the right time to buy gold at 1300s. When should we buy? This is the corrective pullback we were looking for. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of news coming up this week, which I'm sure we'll talk about. But essentially, investors, they want to be looking at this pullback as a buying opportunity, but wait a little bit longer because we've only been correcting for about 25 days. Your average correction on gold is at least 30 days. So I'm looking towards the end of June, beginning of July as a really good buying opportunity. And then and as we enter into August, that is typically where, in terms of seasonality, gold picks up again. Okay, because it's a quiet time. It's a quiet time, yeah, absolutely. And also over August is the start of the wedding season in Asia, where gold demand picks up a lot. And if you look historically at the charts, July, August is typically where gold bottoms, and it, mm -hmm. this year in particular could represent a really good buying opportunity. Okay, so hold back and then get your bargain and go shopping for your gold, right? Yes. Okay, let's talk about oil because mm. we've got OPEC, OPEC this tomorrow. week as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it's been gaining. Yeah. What is going on there? Do you expect this to continue? Because the energy minister from the UAE certainly does. Yes, yeah, so well, if we have a look at oil's performance year to date, so oil from the end of January lows is up 85% this year. So it's been a very strong rally. Over the entire year, year to date, oil is up 12%. Where oil has stumbled is at $50 per barrel. So that overall level of resistance, we've been sitting at that level for about two weeks now. We're really struggling technically to break that level. In the short term, we would anticipate a correction at this level, at this zone. We've got OPEC tomorrow, which is likely to be a catalyst for the short term move. If you have a look at the charts for technical analysts out there, if you have a look at the overall pattern, we've got a rising wedge pattern at the moment, which means the price is getting tighter and tighter. It's been consolidating for two weeks and it's not had enough buyers to actually push it above the 50 level to actually continue the momentum above that zone. So mm -hmm. it's, it's come up to 50, but it's not having had enough follow through at this level. And because it's not followed through, we would anticipate a move back to around $47 to $45 US dollars per barrel. But the OPEC meeting tomorrow could be a wild card, mm -hmm. and that will be very important for the short term direction. Also, from a supply and demand point of view, uh, what a, a lot of analysts they're not looking at is the amount of oil which is currently stored at sea right now. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, the amount of oil stored at sea is at five year highs. So at this current level, if that comes on shore, the amount of oil which is currently being stored in super tankers, over 40 super tankers, if that was to come on shore, that would provide more bearish sentiment for the market. And at the moment, a lot of that oil being held is not profitable. So it needs to come on land very soon. So essentially that could be a short term bearish sentiment. Again, if you go back to this year, last year, this time last year, mm -hmm. we've got very similar parallels in terms of the price structure. So if you have a look at oil from 2015, the breakdown started at the end of May into June and continued to follow through right until 
the beginning of uh, January 2016, where it broke down to 12-year lows. Typically, the second half of the year is more bearish for oil than the first half, and we've already had a runaway move in the first half of 2016. So again, what I would suggest to traders and yeah. investors is watch the OPEC announcement tomorrow, watch the OPEC meeting. It's likely to give rise to the short-term direction. If oil breaks down, we're looking at $47 per barrel and $45 per barrel. At those levels, we want to see whether investors will come back in because investment demand has been its highest since June 2015. So if we see investors buy the pullback, same as gold. If we see that pullback, then we're likely to go higher. But if it breaks down from there, we could get the typical seasonality cycle as we head towards the second half of the year. Okay, great stuff. Thank you very much for that advice. That's Phil Carr there, Pleasure. Head of Trading from the Gold and Silver Club, telling us what to do, when to get our gold, and what to look for in oil as well. So some great advice today. Thank you for watching.